Hi, my name is Dr. Kirmani and today I'll be talking about stress. What's stress? Stress is our body's response to demand. But the demands can be physical, emotional, spiritual, intellectual or social. When we encounter stress, what happens to us? There are two important organs that, uh, two important glands that come into action. The adrenals that are present on top of the kidneys and the pituitary that's located in the brain. Now the pituitary gets triggered and it releases a hormone called ACTH in the blood. This will stimulate the adrenals to produce the stress hormone called cortisol. Now this hormone helps us to have a fight and flight response in dangerous situations. Many different situations or life events can cause stress and we all deal with stress differently. Now the stress can be caused by excess of work like workload, arguments, loss of a loved one due to death, separation or divorce, relationship issues between the spouses or between the parents and children. Many people worry about the uncertainty of future, illnesses, financial problems. Some people find transition periods quite, quite stressful like changing a job or moving a house. Too much of stress for a prolonged period can be harmful as it begins to affect the quality of our life. It produces high level of cortisol in our blood and this can cause a variety of symptoms. People under constant stress may experience a lot of symptoms ranging from tiredness to muscle aches and pains, mood swings like anxiety, depression or irritability to some physical symptoms like rapid weight gain, flushed on face, they might have increased thirst or urination as a result of hyperglycemia. Some people may develop high blood pressure. They will become more sick more frequently because they become more prone to infections as their immunity goes down. People with pre-existing skin conditions will see an exacerbation like acne. Uh, it can also affect our bones. The bones may become thin, brittle and can be broken easily as seen in osteoporosis. And stress is one of the major cause of infertility in many couples as it can cause irregular periods in women or decreased libido in men. Now is cortisol bad for us? Well, cortisol is good because it performs a lot of normal functions to maintain the homeostasis of the body. Apart from fight and flight response during stressful situations, it also helps to reduce inflammation. It helps in regulating metabolism, assisting in memory formation, suppressing the immune system, helps in increasing our blood sugar levels. So it's an important hormone which performs such important functions in our body. Apart from chronic stress, Levels of cortisol can rise because of some other factors in our body like problems with adrenal or pituitary glands such as an overactivity of these glands or a cancer or growth of these glands. People with pre-existing chronic disease like obesity or those who are on certain medications for a very long time may also have high level of cortisol in their blood. A cortisol level test is performed to check if your cortisol production is too high or too low also has to diagnose certain conditions like Addison's disease or Cushing's disease. These tests are done to assess the functioning of pituitary or adrenals. Uh, cortisol blood tests, cortisol saliva tests and urine tests are available. Uh, there's an interesting fact about cortisol. Its levels in our body, they fluctuate during different times of the day. So it's highest in the morning and lowest in the night at around 2 to 30 a.m. Uh, that's why cortisol blood test is usually done during morning times. No special preparations are required. Just make sure you're not taking any medication that might influence the level of cortisol in your blood. Uh, people who do not want blood test, another alternative test is available like cortisol saliva test. It's much easier to perform. Cortisol urine test is usually done by taking 24-hour urine sample and checked for urinary catecholamines. Now the good news is you can lower cortisol naturally. Well, this can be achieved by increasing growth hormone as doing exercises like walking, going to a gym or aerobics or whatever suits you. Do it consistently for at least 30 minutes a day. 
get adequate sleep at least seven to eight hours of sleep is essential uh, many people have problems with sleep so you can practice good sleep hygiene if you're not sure check out my other video on sleep problems now increase vitamin d b1 and b5 by going out in the sun taking vitamin d tablets at least 10 internet 10,000 international units per day vitamin b1 and b5 will assist the adrenals to function normally Taking potassium and magnesium will help to increase the parasympathetic nervous system. This system will help to rest, digest and repair your body. Omega-3 fatty acids are available in a variety of fish, flax seeds and walnuts. Adaptogen supplements are sometimes useful in lowering cortisol naturally. Some of them are ashwagandha, ginseng and rhodiola. For those of you who find it hard to manage stress and uh, struggle to deal with it here are some suggestions to unwind now if you have issues with someone talk it over look for solutions instead of running away from it you can practice relaxation by listening to music playing an instrument or doing something that will help you to unwind meditation and yoga is another way of relaxing your mind and body develop healthy habits do things that you enjoy the most Going to a movie with a family, with your family or friends, or watching a comedy show would be ideal. Make sure you laugh every day because laughter is the best medicine. For those of you who love animals, consider getting a pet, or if you have one, spend more time with your pet. For people who, who think they are burnt out, here are some suggestions on adapting these habits that might be helpful. Be less of a perfectionist, do not be a slave to the club, do not bottle things up, stop feeling guilty, approve of yourself and others, express yourself and your anger, resolve all personal conflicts, make friends and be happy, and keep a positive outlook on life. So be moderate and less intense in your activities and seek a balance of activities such as recreation, meditation, reading, rest, exercise and family and social activities. Take care of yourself. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. If you wish to hear something about, leave it in the comment box below. If you like my content, like and subscribe to my channel and share this video to as many people as possible. 